Hi creative friends, I'm Abby, and you may already know that here at So Much You Do, we love everything Cricut. If you've considered giving a Cricut machine a try, but are worried that you don't have enough crafting competency, this video is for you. I'm going to show you step by step how to make this cute Be Kind t-shirt using Cricut Iron-On. And if you're worried about the software, Cricut Design Space, no need to worry. I've got you covered there as well. I'll be walking you through from beginning to end till you have a cute shirt of your own. You won't believe how simple, fast, and easy it is to make your own shirt using Cricut Explore Air 2 and Iron-On. I'll make sure to link all the materials we're using below, so be sure to check those out. Now I personally have and use all three of Cricut's machines. The Maker, the Joy, and of course the Explore Air 2, which is what today is all about. Now the material we're working with today is iron-on, but the Cricut Explore Air 2 can do so much more than just make t-shirts. It's great for creating cards, paper crafts, decorations, and can even draw using pen. To use the pen, you open up the clamp, push the pen in, and close the clamp. Pretty easy. Next to the pen, is the fine point blade. It's what I use most often for projects. It can cut everything from paper to iron-on. Any machine that can do so much is going to be an investment, but it's well worth it when you consider all the different uses for the Cricut Explorer 2. Now, are you ready to get creating? Let's get to work and we'll be done before you know it. Let's start by gathering our supplies. Of course we're going to need the Cricut Explorer 2, iron-on, Whichever color you choose. I'm using a Cricut t-shirt blank for this project. They're my favorite fitting t-shirts. Tools. I'm using scissors and a weeder for this project. A standard grip mat. And a protectant sheet for when we apply the iron-on. I'm going to use my Cricut Easy Press 2 to apply the iron-on and I also have an Easy Press mat. Iron-on can be applied with a household iron, but it's a little bit trickier to get consistent results. Let's get started by opening up Cricut Design Space and signing in. Along the top, you can see options for account management and machine setup. You can also click to see all of your projects in one place. And you can also select which machine you're using, which will affect which projects you can do. You can also click on New Project if you're ready to start a new project. And of course, the Home button will always bring you back to this home page. So today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a project of your own. So let's go ahead and start by clicking New Project. This is where we can create projects within Design Space. Over on the left, we have different tools to help us create the projects. For example, we have templates. Templates are really helpful if you're not quite sure what size to make your images for your project, and they're designed for reference only. They're not actually going to be cut in any projects. Below templates, we have projects. This is a really great feature because what you can do is find any project you want. You can see lots of examples here, and you click on it and it's ready to go. Next, we have images. If you can think of an image, you can probably find it in Cricut Design Space. One thing I love is that I can look up, for example, let's say I want a cactus picture. Search. You'll see there are tons of different cactus options to choose from. If you're a Cricut Access subscription member, like I am, all of these images that say subscribed come with that subscription. So normally you'd have to be paying separately for each of those images. And I find whenever I'm searching for an image, I almost always am able to find something that is included. The Cricut Access subscription is also a great way to save money over time if you're using a lot of different images and fonts. If we look below images, we can see our text. Simply type your word in, you can resize it with the arrows as needed, and you can go to the top and choose all of your text options, which are pretty endless. If there's a little A, that means it's part of the Access subscription, so it'll be included with that, and some are free for everyone. There's also options for shapes, and you can even upload your own images, which we'll save for another tutorial. Let's get started on our project for today. I'm going to show you just how simple it is to use some image and text to create our own Be Kind t-shirt. Let's start off by adding our text. 
can click on text and simply type be kind. Now you'll notice those letters are quite far apart. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to line space and we're going to change it. Let's try negative seven and see if that gets us close enough. I think we're going to make it a little bit closer together at negative eight. Perfect. Now we're not going to worry about the font size yet because we're going to add our image in first. So we're going to click on images and we're going to search all of these images for a heart. This geometric heart is exactly what I was looking for, so let's go ahead and insert it. Now while we're aligning the text and heart together, we don't need to worry about the overall size. We'll take care of that later. But what I'm going to do is click on the text and change the alignment to right. And you can see that that actually changes the spacing a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more space back in. 6.6 .6 looks perfect. Now that we have our spacing and our alignment figured out, we're going to move it back into the heart. You can either resize the text to fit the heart or the heart to fit the text. Either way, we just want to get them so that the be kind words fit nicely inside the heart. Adjust it just a hair. It always takes a little bit of fiddling to get it just where you like it, but it's really easy to move it around until you think it's perfect. Now I'm going to select both together and I'm going to click attach. By clicking attach, it's going to join our image and our text together into one. That will also keep it together when we send it to the cutting mat next. Now that we have them together, we can resize however we'd like. And I'm going to choose a width of seven inches. That's for a women's shirt. If you have a look at the right side of your screen, it keeps track of your fonts and your images, and you can even see it shows that they're attached together here. Now down at the bottom, we already use the attach tool, but there's also slice, weld, flatten, and contour, which are also really handy tools to use, but we won't be needing to use today. Now that we have our image ready, first I'm gonna save it. And next, we can click on Make It in the upper right-hand corner. And because we attached the font and image together, you can see they're still together on the cutting mat. You can move the design around as needed if you happen to already have a piece cut out from your iron-on that you're trying to avoid. Now, the most important thing on this page when we're working with iron-on is to make sure we mirror. If you forget to mirror, you'll end up with a backwards design on your finished shirt, which we definitely don't want. Make sure your machine is turned on and plugged into your computer, and click continue in the bottom right hand corner. At the top you'll see that your machine is connected and it will let you know if it's not. And you can see also that my base material is set to iron on. I change that by adjusting the dial on the Explore Air 2. I like that Design Space gives us a reminder to make sure the mirror is turned on, and also that the iron-on material is face or shiny side down. Below we're instructed to load tools and material. For cutting iron-on, we need a fine point blade, which I already have in my machine. Next, you can place your iron-on shiny side down onto your mat and load your mat into your machine. Once the mat's loaded, Design Space will prompt you to select Go on the machine and it'll start cutting. When your cut's complete, click the arrow button to unload the mat. I'm going to turn off my machine and I'm also going to trim the extra iron on. So that I don't waste any. It's important to leave a little bit of extra around the edges so that you'll have something to stick to your t-shirt. But I like to save these pieces because you never know when they can come in handy. Next we're going to weed our design.
Now we can turn our design around and see what it'll look like. So cute. We can now put our cover back on the mat. And our next step is to take our t-shirt. As I mentioned, I'm using one of the Cricut blanks that I love. They're one of my favorite fitting t-shirts that I have in my closet, actually. And we're going to iron on our design onto our shirt. When using iron-on and the Cricut t-shirt blank, Cricut recommends to use a temperature of 315 degrees, which I have mine set here. It's got to cool down a little bit because I had it at a higher temperature already. And I'm going to change the timer to 30 seconds. While we're waiting for the temperature to come down to 315 on my Easy Press, I'm going to make sure I have my protective sheet handy. This is just a piece of butcher paper, but you can also purchase protective sheets on Cricut.com. I'm going to open up my shirt. And it's actually helpful. When you first open your shirt up, you can notice there is some fold lines from packaging. And those lines are actually helpful to line up your design. I'm going to lay out where I want my design on the shirt. I'm going to make sure the v-neck and my heart line up nicely. This is just temporary for now as we're going to remove it to preheat the shirt, but it gives us a good idea of where we're going to want to place it. Okay, now that the easy press is at the correct temperature, we're going to go ahead and preheat the shirt for five seconds. Just going to watch till it gets to 25. There we go. That'll reset the timer for us as well. And I'm going to take the design and line it up. I'm going to put it just a little bit higher where I had it before. Okay, it looks good. I'm going to put my butcher paper on top and place the Easy Press on top for 30 seconds with light pressure. Remove the Easy Press the butcher paper and now we're going to flip the shirt inside out and fuse from the other side. This time we only need to do 15 seconds. Now iron-on is a cool peel which means we're going to wait until the plastic cools before we peel off the liner. Now that our design is cool, we can pull off the plastic backing. I like to peel it very slowly and carefully. And make sure everything is fused properly. If you notice any spots haven't fused properly, you can always put the carrier sheet back down and then re-press it. There you have it, our cute Be Kind shirt.